Okay, um, hello everyone. Okay, so the next program in chapter two is a sales prediction program. Okay, so a company has determined that its annual profit is typically 23% of total sales. So write a program that asks the user to enter the projected amount of total sales and then displays the profit that will be made from that amount. And it's given us a hint, it says use the value 0 0.23 to represent 23%, okay. Okay, so the reason it's saying we should use 0 0.23 to represent 23% is because I'm going to open up a calculator here. If you type in 23 divide, divided by 100, which, okay, 23%, it's going to be equal to 0 0.23, okay? So that's why it's saying we should use 0 0.23 to represent 23%. So basically, 0 0.23 is, is 23%, okay? Okay, so a company has determined that its annual profit is typically... 23% of total sales. So basically, a company makes money at the end of the year. And they've realized that, you know, the profits that they make at the end of the year is is 23% of the, the total sales, okay, the amount of money they made at the, at the end of the year. So we, we should, we're going to create a program that's going to calculate 23% of the total sales and that's going to be our profit, okay? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start writing the program, and, and as we do that, we'll, we'll get um, a clearer sense of the program. Okay, so first of all, we need to ask the user to enter the amount of money they project to make at the end of the year, because the program says, write a, pro write a question says, write a program that asks the user to enter the projected amount of total sales. So we need to ask, ask the user to please enter the projected amount of total sales, okay? And I'm going to do that with the input function and type and say, please enter, I'm sorry, my typing is not good. Enter the projected, projected amount, <laughs> my typing is bad, of total sales. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay, so once we you we call the um sorry we don't once we yeah once we use the input function okay once we use the input function it's going to now allow the user to type in something and whatever is typed by the user is stored as a string it's okay it's going to be returned by this input function as a string so even if the user types in a number even if the user types in let's say five thousand or two thousand that 5,000 or 2,000 is going to be stored as a string and returned as a string. And we can use strings in calculations. So we need to first convert whatever they, that the user types, okay, which is going to be stored as a string, into a number, okay, into a float. In this case, into a float because, you know, the user can type in um, 2,000, uh, sorry, uh, can type in, can type in um, a decimal, can type in, let's say, 25.50 or 100.50 or you know something like that so we need to first convert whatever the user types into a number so we can use it in calculations because whatever again the user types it's going to it's going to be stored as a string and it's going to be returned as a string so if we need to convert it to a number okay so now the user is going to enter the amount in this case the user is going to enter a dollar a dollar amount so let, let's say five thousand or ten thousand so once once the user does that okay and types in let's say two thousand or let's say three you know a dollar amount we need to go ahead and convert it into a float in this case okay a float is basically a decimal because the user can type in a decimal so i'm going to type in the function float and i'm going to surround everything i'm going to put everything in parentheses <coughs> sorry i'm going to space it out a little bit so we can see Okay, so we've basically converted everything that the user typed once we use the input function into a float. We've surrounded everything with, with, with parentheses. And once we convert everything that the user typed into a float, we need a place to store it. So I'm going to go ahead and create another variable. And I'm going to call that variable projected total sales. Okay. All right, so 
Um, Python has like a character, a character, um, but Python doesn't like too many line, too many characters or too many, yeah, too many characters on a, on a single line. So that's why th this red line is there. Um, I don't know if that, that, that rule is too is strict. I don't think it's too strict. Um, I've never actually actually written a program that you know that goes um, uh, um, goes over this line, but um, I'll I'll go ahead and cut this line. I'll, I'll go ahead and break this line on a new line. So they they don't want too many characters on a, on one line. That's why this red line is there. So basically, write all your programs to fit within this area. Okay, that's you know that's like a, a Python thing. And um, Again, like I said, I don't know if it's too strict. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and break this on a new line. So I'm going to basically concatenate this, okay? Concatenate this string to this string and break it. But any before, basically what I've done is I've basi I'm basically concatenating this string, okay, to, I'm using the, the plus sign to concatenate it to this string because I want to go ahead and break it. Actually, I, I broke it on, on a, you know, I, I didn't. I was supposed to break it before, okay, before this. So I, I don't know why I did that. I think I was, you know, overthinking. All right, so I will take it, take everything back. I'm going to go ahead and break it here. I'm going to put the plus sign here. First, first close the string. Okay. So I'll turn off this feature. The you see the the red lines that un the underline. You know, I know the code. The code is is wrong now. That's why it's underlining und underlining it. But I don't really like it because I you know, I don't really like it for now. I'll I'll turn it off you know from the next video going. But for now, I'll just keep it on. Okay. So I'm basically closing the string, and I'm concatenating it with this string. I'm going to go ahead and break it here like that. Okay. But before you break, I'm going I'm going to take it back. Before you break any line in Python, you have to first type the backslash before you, you break it. Okay, so that's, all, that's, that's what I did. I'm going to go back. It, so, th so this is what I did to to break this this whole line, okay, because it, it's, it, it went um, over this line. So I'm going to first close the string. I'm going to join it with, I'm going to concatenate it with this string here. I'm going to go ahead and break it, but before I do, I've, I've, I've brought it back. I need to put the, the backslash, type the backslash, and then break it. Okay, so now we've broken it and everything is within or before this red line, so that's good. Again, I don't know if that rule is too strict, but um, it's a Python, it's a Python um, thing. Okay, so now we have projected, projected total sales in this variable, converted to a float, so now we, we have a float to work with. And I'm going to now. We need to now calculate uh, calculate 23 percent of the proje the projected total sales. Okay, and as we know, 23 percent is the same as 0 0.23. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate 23 percent of total sales. So 23 percent, which is 0 0.23. Okay, 23 percent off. You can read the uh, um, asterisk or the multiplication sign as off. Okay, so 23 percent off. This is the same as, as saying 23 divided by 100, okay, all into parentheses, okay, off, okay, basically. But we already know that uh, 23 divided by 100 is 0 0.23. <coughs> sorry, I have a slight cough, sorry. So 0 0.23, okay, 23% off. You can read, the, again, the um, multiplication sign as off projected total sales okay so 23 percent of projected total sales is going to be our profit and once we calculate that we need we can calculate um, this we need a place to store it so I'm going to go ahead and create another variable called profit and I'm going to store this in there so profit is going to be equal to 23 percent of projected total sales which was which the user typed here okay Okay, so I'm going to go to the next line. So now we have the project projected total sales. We have the profit. All we have to do now is just print the profits. So I'm going to do that with a print function. 
I'm going to print out the profits, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and, and test this out and make sure it's working. So I'm going to debug it and we need to save it. So I'm going to save it. Last time out, I created a folder on the desktop. So Python, programming challenges, chapter two. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder for this one. I'm going to call it sales prediction. And I need to save the file also as oops, sa um, sales prediction. The pie. <coughs> Sorry, sales prediction. The pie. So I'll save it here, and it's running. So please enter the projected amount of. Oh, okay. So I didn't put a space either at the end of this string or at the beginning of this string. So I'm going to go ahead and put the space at the beginning of this string. So we have a space there. And I'll debug, I'll stop this and I'll debug it one more time. So please enter the projected amount of total sales. I'm going to type in 10,000. And we have 2,300, okay, so 2300.0. Um, let's just make sure. So I'm going to type in, what is it, 23%, uh, which is 23 divided by 100, which is the same as 0 0.23, okay, off. 10,000 and we have 2,300 so it's correct the program is run correctly okay so now that we have the value we need to we have the value all right but it's not formatted nicely we don't have the dollar signs and the commas and it's not for it doesn't look like it's the right value but it doesn't look like a real dollar value so let's go ahead and format this so it displays correct uh, displays correctly okay so to format it we need a, we, we're going to use the format function I'm going to surround what I'm formatting with parentheses. So I'm just space this out a little bit. So the format function is going to take the, the what you're formatting as the first argument, and the second argument is going to be your format specifier in in quotation in, in double quotes or double or single quotes. Okay, in, in quote in, in quotes basically in quotations. So the format function takes the first argument which is the, what you're formatting, and the second argument is going to be your format specifier, how you want it to display. So because I'm formatting a float, okay, profit is a float, it's basically a decimal, because we are multiplying over here, dot a decimal, we are going to basically get a decimal. I mean, we, I mean, yes, we're going to get a decimal here. Or let me just say we can get a decimal here, okay. Because, you, you know, projected total sales is a, is a, is a float, okay. Okay, so I, I'm not going to go ahead and assume. Okay, but I'm just saying that it, it, it um, it's not a float, you know, in in its in it, in, a, in actual sense, it's not necessarily a float. But what I'm what the reason why I'm 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 considering this as a float is because I use we have a we have a decimal here, and the user can type in a decimal here also. Okay, it's basically this 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 um, variable can hold a float, and that's why, or it's going to, uh, yeah, it, it can hold a float. Okay, that's why I'm putting a float here basically because if i don't put a float in let's say i i i um i i format it as an integer if we end up getting let's say 23 dollars and 50 cents here then it's not going to display correctly so i'm i'm specifying this outputs as a float so that we can see everything that um everything after the decimal point okay so sorry for the confusion there. i hope i didn't confuse anyone all right but i hope i hope you understand me okay all right so because this is a float, okay, I'm going to put put an F, okay. I want I want it rounded to two decimal places instead of one one decimal place over here. I want to round it to two decimal places. So I, I do that by putting a point two in front of the float, the F. Uh, so this is still my form, my format specifier. So now it's going to round it with two decimal place two, two decimal places. All right, and I want. Com commas where necessary. I want I wanted to separate it with commas where necessary. You know, if I have uh, two uh, two point three million, I want to see, you know, two comma three zero zero comma. I want to see commas where necessary. Separate it so it looks like a a, a real um, a money amount. Okay, so before be, you know, to do that, I need to put a comma character. Okay, a comma symbol right before the precision, which is point two. 
okay before the F before the float okay so comma first position and this is the type type okay so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to debug it one last time type in 10,000 hit enter and see now we have the comma when necessary and it's surrounded to two decimal places we need a dollar sign in front of it so I'm going to go ahead and create a dollar sign here you know, as a string and I'm going to concatenate it with the output here the output of this which is which is which, which is pretty much a string okay so now I'm concatenating this dollar sign to the output here which I'm going to get the output I'm going to get here which is pre basically well, pretty much a string so I'm going to go ahead and debug it one last time type in 10,000 hit enter and you see I have two thousand three hundred dollars I can even add some string and say the profit is I still have my dollar sign here so it's going to join it to the output here okay so I'm going to debug it one last time type in 10,000 and it says the profit is two thousand three hundred dollars okay I can try a different value and say fifty thousand and it says the profit is eleven thousand five hundred dollars okay all right so if you have any questions please comments down below and I'll do everything to, to reply to them or answer them and thank you very much for watching take care of yourselves have a good day and I'll see you next time with the next program bye bye